Hello everybody, welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this is The Thunder Show. And today, he's wearing a Jets jersey. This is pretty rad. We had a great viewer send in this little jersey. I was like, what am I gonna do with that? And then, bingo! Tremendous thought process popped up and he's wearing a Vilma jersey. And let me just say, I think Jonathan Vilma is actually a little overrated, but that's another story for another day. And we're gonna really focus today on a wine region that I think is so up and coming, so exciting, and I think is at the crossroads at this point in the American market. Now what we're talking about today is South African wines. South Africa is a place that has been making great wine for a very, very long time. But right now, what's really intriguing and exciting is this amazing, explosion of dollars and talent that's being poured in into especially Stellenbosch from the Bordeaux market. We have a lot of changes that we're gonna be seeing in uh, South African wines over the next three to five years and I think they're gonna be quite profound and really changing the whole outlook on South African wines and they're making some very serious wines over there. Now, we're very fond, as you know if you watch WLTV, of the Chenin Blancs and the Sauvignon Blancs coming out of South Africa, but today we're gonna focus on three wines that are red wines that are very special, very interesting. I've not had any of them, but they have a lot of hype and a lot of pedigree and I'm excited about trying them. Um, the other thing I want to mention about South African wines is that right now, dollar for dollar, with the best ones that I've had, they probably outperform every area in the world. You can really get world-class $100, $200 quality wines from South Africa for about $40, $50. You've got to find the right wines, and I'm not telling you what they are right now because I just like doing that to you. But today we're going to focus on three specific wines, and let's get right into it because that's what we do, and I don't want to waste your time too much. Anything I want to talk about? Any links? Nothing too much. I think I'm in good shape. Peacock Ridge 2005 Merlot. This wine is $15 US dollars. And, uh, and it's a Merlot, it's 15% alcohol content. And uh, what's really, you know, it comes from Stellenbosch. And what I'm really excited about with this wine is a couple things. One, it's Merlot. And you know exactly where I'm going with this. Justin's bringing sexy back, and I'm bringing Merlot back. Because Merlot has taken an absolute beating after the movie Sideways. And it's really quite unfortunate. I mean, let's be honest. Some of the wines in this world, like Petrus and many other wines, Masetto from Italy, for example, are considered the best wines in the world and they're Merlot-based wines. But because Hollywood told you people, you people, you're getting a left-handed cord. You people have listened to Hollywood and decided you're not drinking Merlot anymore. And I'm gonna drink Pinot Noir because that's what's cool. Huge mistake, but tremendous opportunity for the people that have self-esteem. Self-esteem in wine is the key because there's so much to explore. Don't forget, it changes every year and there's so much going on. So this is an 05 Merlot. I'm excited about trying this. I've been hearing some nice things about Peacock Ridge and it's 15 bones, so it's not totally overpriced. It's kind of in that mid-price range. It's got some tremendous color, very dark Merlot, as you can see, and let's pour a little bit for the Vaniacs that are no longer watching with us. But let's get right into this wine on the bouquet and let's give it a little bit of a sniff. Now the first tone I'm getting with this wine is a little bit of a forest floor, pine cone, needle, pine needle kind of action. There's also a little hint of V8 juice, and if you know me, I like the veggies. Veggies two, fruit one. Veggies are winning in this palette, and I'm preferring that. I'm, I'm enjoying that. I'm, I'm excited with where that's coming from on this wine. It smells very dark. There's almost a, sun, a subtle kind of lasting mocha flavor on the finish, which I find a little bit clever. Let's give this a whirl and see what's going on here. Wow, this wine packs serious punch. It actually has a very dense, cloying, overpowering body, which a lot of people are gonna be seduced by. I don't know if you know this, but bodies seduce people. And in this wine, it's gonna seduce a lot of people. It's so explosive and so rich, it has absolutely attacked my palate with no concern to me. And I'm kind of a little bit angry about that. Um, it's very, Thick, jammy, I get a lot of blueberry components to this wine. This is a fruit bomb. Old world fans, 
you're gonna have to leave the building just for this wine because you're not gonna be happy where this wine is going. However, and this is a big HO, a big however, this wine has a lot of structure, complexity, mid palate, and richness to this. This is not a flimsy, you know, makeup up kind of wine. This has real stuff behind its fruit bomb character. And for me, who many of you know, is not the hugest fruit bomb fan, it actually is showing a lot. I actually like it in a lot of different ways. At the end of the day, this wine is exceptionally balanced. Even though it is massively fruit bombed, the tannins, the structure, and the overall complexity of this wine contain it. You know, it's like that wild guy, but his wife holds him down. That's what kind of makes me think of this wine. Um, This is a wine that I'm gonna score 90 points. I'm super impressed with this wine. I actually have to admit, I, I, I'm taken aback by the overall quality of this wine. It's it's very well made. I, I'm kind of optimistic about where Merlot can go in uh, in South Africa. The only problem is it doesn't taste like Merlot. And I'm not kidding. It really doesn't have the true characteristics of Merlot. So it's a little weird. It's like Merlot meets Shiraz and become friends. It's kind of like that. So it throws me off a little bit. That's actually what didn't allow me to get completely insane about this wine. I like variety, correct wines. I mean, be yourself. The whole world's mashing together. Everybody looks the same. I mean, everybody's got like a Zac Efron haircut now. I mean, come on. Anyway, let's move on. Seidelberg, 2005, Roland's Reserve. Roland, that's a great name. Pinotage. And you can't do an episode on South Africa without doing Pinotage. This wine is 19 US dollars, worn by Keyshawn Johnson, former great jet. Got ran out of town for no reason. 19 bones, and Pinotage is very interesting. Let's talk about Pinotage. You need to know what's going on with Pinotage. Pinotage was created in South Africa at the University of Stellenbosch in uh-oh, 1925. You might have to Google that. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. 25, and it is a clone. It is a combination, a tremendous thought process went behind this. This is a clone of Pinot Noir and Cinso. Now, Cinso is a grape from the southwest of France that is a big harvest producer. It's a very tough grape. It's not very fantastic. I mean, there's not a lot of people that are like, oh my God, Cinso's here, let's go crazy. But it's a, it's a workman grape. It's a nice grape. Pinot Noir, on the other hand, is very you know, cute and thin-skinned and difficult to you know, work with and is kind of a pain in the ass for winemakers but produces just elegant, delicate, beautiful wines. It's a little prima donna. It really is. Now the thought process was combine these two grapes, take the best of both worlds, and you have Pinotage. Problem is, everybody hated it, and hated it hard for a long time. Once it was all done, the wines were very non-descriptive, off, people felt like they tasted like rusted tin cans was the terminology a lot of people like to use in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Pinotage has had a very long and difficult struggle to get to this place where now people are starting to recognize it as a decent wine. Um, 15% alcohol in this wine. Now you have a little homework on Pinotage. And you know, some people watch for the, you know, um, for the knowledge value of this show. Eric, don't you think? Oh, that's right, I said Eric. EFK, back in the hot seat. Chris Mott's on vacation. It's a little deja vu, a little early WLTV here. Maybe I should tone it down, be like, what's up? Hello, everybody. Anyway, let's give this wine a little bit of a smell. Now you may remember from my past uh, Pinotage episodes, if you've been around for a while, Vaniex, uh, these wines have given me a banana component quite a bit in the past. Unfortunately, I'm not getting it this time. It would have been nice, but what I am getting, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do it. Ah, The Oak Monster has made its presence felt in this wine, and that's right off the bat a concern, because we're all scared of monsters, and especially when they bring too much oak. I'm getting quite a powerful woody, oaky component on the nose, which is scaring me. I'm getting a little bit of strawberry, almost like a strawberry vanilla shake action on the nose as well, which sounds kind of delicious, right? You may be tricked though. If there's too much oak, it's gonna kill the whole wine. Let's see if that's the case. There's too much oak. I mean, this is a problem. This is an absolute problem in the wine world. People are disguising flavors with oak, and you're saying, why would they do that? Well, maybe they don't want you to taste what the fruit tastes like. Did you ever think about that? That's the case in this wine. Um, I'm really unhappy with the overall oak and wooded action this wine. It really mutes the overall flavors. 
doesn't allow me to really taste what's going on there with the fruit. The fruit comes from the vineyard. That's what I want to taste. That's what you want to taste. That's what everybody wants to taste. There's a little hint of sour cherry and a little bit of blackberry as well. I get a little pepper action, but I mean a very meh kind of wine. I'm gonna score this wine 86 points and give it a major pass. Let's throw up six Z's, way too much oak. I'm gonna even throw a couple of O's in there. Paz O, because the oak is in there. Let's give it three O's, like P-A, six Z's, three O's. Let's move on. I just recalled something. There was one thing I wanted to talk about. Huge controversy yesterday about people feeling that I'm point bashing. A lot of people want me to continue with rating. Clearly you see I am. Let me just clarify my stance on ratings by critics and what have you. I'm not against them, I do them. I don't wanna be a hypocrite, so I'm on board. I just don't want people to treat it as gospel. It can't be cemented. I mean, it's just, don't let it be cemented. It's just silly how people feel like, oh, this is 88 points, I'm not buying. Or, I saw somebody leave a comment, a customer in their wine shop said, I'm only buying 93 plus scored wines. I mean, that's silliness, stupidity, and sad. Three S's. I mean, come on. So, you know, just to let everybody know, I understand, and a lot of people were emailing me and saying, on a limited budget, what are we supposed to do? I respect that, I understand that. Just explore and try different things. And most of all, trust your own palate. If it's a 93 and you hate it, don't be scared to say, wait a minute, I don't like this. Call them out, they like it, I love it. Rustenberg, 2004, John X. Merriman, red blend. And this is a very interesting little blend. This is, 46% 46% Merlot, 36% Cabernet, 9% Cabernet Franc, and 9% Petit Verdot. You know what I think about Petit Verdot. John X. Merriman planted this vineyard in 1892. I think he was even like the Prime Minister of South Africa. A little bit more Wikipedia Google action for everybody. Um, and so uh, this wine is 93 points, wine enthusiast, 24 US dollars. 24 is a good number, being worn by rookie sensation Darrell Rivas number one pick of your New York Jets. Um, 24 Bones, 93 points, uh, wine enthusiast. Uh, uh, Rustenberg is probably at some levels, for the people that are somewhat knowledgeable about South African wines, the most recognized and respected name out there. Um, so I'm excited about trying this wine. I mean, they've really made a lot of great wines through through the years. So we're gonna see there's some really nice color. Uh, I'm really enjoying the color profile. You can't see the fingers, so it's dark. Uh, let's get a little bit of a sniff action. And boy, does Cap Franc never ever fail to deliver bell peppers. And I am on board, Cap Franc. I am your homie. I am down with that. I am all about vegetables. This wine has an explosion of garden. And if you know me, I go garden over fruit tree. I'm gonna say it again until I am the vegetable king of this country. I prefer veggies. This wine is bringing a heavy dose of bell pepper. I'm also getting asparagus, and when I see Brussels sprouts, I run. I run in that direction, and this wine has it. You have to know what you're getting yourself into. This is a vegetable bomb. No fruit that I can sense on the nose whatsoever. I'm also getting a little bit of dirt, and you know, we like making cone and eat dirt. Ellen was out on the dirt. That was tough. But the producer, good call, Eric. See, that's why Eric's, you know, he's old school. Eric's old school, it's like Converse. All right, so, um, Let's give this wine a whirl. It's really, it's really a tremendously explosive vegetal bouquet. Tremendously explosive vegetal bouquet. A temp, I like that. Let's give it a whirl. Ooh, mmm, mmm. Mm. It's a shame. This wine was stupid close to being tremendous, exciting, and uncanny. Um, The finish is where I'm a little bit worried with this wine. This wine, when it hits your palate, if you're a classic Claret Bordeaux drinker, you're gonna be all about this wine. It is very traditional, old school, classic, properly trained. I mean, it's very, very balanced, great structure, tremendous mouthfeel. It reminds me a lot of top-notch Pomerols that I've had through the years. Beautiful, beautiful, elegant sour cherry dancing throughout your palate. Wonderful mid-palate, great structure, great acidic and tannic balance. I mean, just a well-made wine. Whoever the winemaker is of this wine, which I don't know, is 
clearly in command and in charge and knowing what they're doing with these wines. Uh, the fruit is pure, you're tasting the vineyard. The manipulation is not in place, which really I give a lot of kudos for, I'm down with that. The problem with this wine is that it finishes a little awkward. It is young, maybe that will change over time. It also kind of disappears on me, which that bothers me. When you go Casper on me on the finish, I'm gonna be a little bit down on you. Uh, overall, the wine's got really, really solid, massive fruit. It's a delicious wine. It comes a little short. You know, I'm gonna score this wine 90 points. I actually like this wine quite a bit. I don't wanna tail you off and make you think I'm going in a different direction. I just thought we were about to get silly. And when we get silly, we can dance. I wanna dance. Um, 90 point wine, 24 bucks, I think is an absolute buy. Again, you need to get know what you're, you're getting yourself into. For example, both these wines did tremendously today. We're talking about two very different styles. This is where your palate comes in. Maybe you like them both. I do, you know, I do. Um, maybe you really lean towards the fruit bombs, but this is structured fruit bomb. This is really a great wine for a lot of people to try because it will show you the difference between what I consider a fruit bomb that is structured and other wines that I just think are fake and high C and all that. And this is just a classic wine. I believe in South Africa. I believe that it is a place that is going to produce some of the best wines in the world over the next 36 to 48 months and it's a place that I absolutely think that you should seek out, spend more time in and obviously you've got my email up there. I'm thrilled to answer all of your questions because that's what I do for a living now. Question of the day. What cereal are you addicted to? I gotta ask those kind of questions. I'm curious because you with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not. 